Hey y'all, so I did this video right here a while back on how to fix broken plastics with a zip tie and fire. So a lot of you guys left a lot of helpful comments and uh, you know, figured ways that we could improve the technique. So I'm gonna go over a couple of those things and we're gonna check out the broken plastic and see how it's held up so far. But it's held up pretty well and there are some tips, you know, that I left out that could be helpful to somebody. So let's check it out. All right, guys, so here's the plastic piece that I fixed in that video. It goes right here up on the bottom of the four-wheeler. So you can see it goes all up in here, and it protects this thing. And it had big old cracks in it. So let's get it off of there and see what it's looking like. All right, so here's the piece of plastic off the four-wheeler off the Suzuki Vincent project. If y'all missed that uh, rebuild series, check out up here. The four-wheeler's done. I just haven't got all the videos out yet. But you can check out right down in there where I laid that plastic filler right down in there. And, man, it's holding up great. And uh, no sign of breakage yet. And you can see right there, it's holding up great, and right there. So basically, uh, I'm gonna throw some pointers out, like I said, that I stole from the comment section because they were great ideas. So tip one, don't use plastic zip ties. Now I know this is counterintuitive to the name of the video, but that was just quick and dirty, you know, pull the zip tie out of the drawer, get it down in there, get it fixed, get it melted back together. So what you wanna do is figure out what type of plastic you're gonna be welding, go down in the description, and I'll link y'all up to some real plastic filler rods for plastic welding on Amazon. And you want to get those, and you can melt them in, and it'll be fixed perfectly, you know, the right way. So, basically, uh, there's all different kinds of plastics for all different kinds of applications. There's HDPE, um, PE, you know, polyethylene, uh, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, PTFE, which is Teflon, which I don't think you're going to be welding that. Um, you know, there's nylon, like the zip ties. That doesn't weld that great. It just kind of burns. There is um, polystyrene. Obviously, that's just going to burn. Styrofoam. There's all different kinds of plastics. Some are thermoplastics. that can be welded back together. Some can't. Like I tried to weld um, a fiberglass reinforced plastic polymer back together once, and man, impossible could not do it so keep that in mind get real filler rods for the type of plastic that you're welding now one really great tip what you can do is you can find a piece of broken plastic and melt it back in here let me show you guys hold on all right so here's a here's a seed tray right here that i found just laying around you know from the garden and it's got a similar type of plastic to to this it's like the same material so what you can do is snap you off a piece of this and use it as a filler rod i've done that a ton like if you need to fix a broken trash can um you can just get a piece of plastic and just you know fill it right in as long as it's similar it'll work great so just search around the house for, you know, broken pieces of plastic like this that you can use as filler rod and you can get it in there and as long as it's similar because these materials are very similar, it will work, guaranteed. Tip two. All right, guys, so I've used all different types of tools to try to do this. I've used a blowtorch. I've used a heat gun with a special little attachment on the end of it. I've used a regular soldering iron and I've used a soldering gun. And honestly, my favorite is the blowtorch and it would be better to get a little pencil blowtorch and use that but my favorite of all time for fixing plastic like this is the blowtorch it just seems to work the best sometimes you don't even need a filler uh rod with it if it's not broken that bad you can actually melt both sides and kind of squish it back together and just fuse the thing back together so use whatever you want a real plastic welding gun from like harbor freight would be the best but you know we're doing this quick, cheap, and dirty, so use what you got. If you got a soldering iron, try that. Got a blowtorch, try that. Got a heat gun, try that. But with the soldering irons, it gets mass, uh, melted plastic on the tip, and it's a pain in the butt to clean off. So, you know, it's up to you what you want to use to melt it back. Tip three. All right, tip three. Somebody said, please, put something heavy on it like that. So when you get down in there with that plastic and you're melting the plastic back together, you can really get it going good and your workpiece isn't moving all over the place. You know, it's common sense, but I didn't do it, so can't be that common. Tip four. 
make sure you clean up the plastic areas uh, before you weld on them because you want that thing really clean so that when you get in there and you melt it back together, there isn't any dirt or debris in there because if there's dirt and debris in there, it's not going to stick very well and it's going to be a pain in the butt. So make sure you clean up the surfaces, maybe with some sandpaper and some rubbing alcohol uh, to get it really clean before you melt it back together. All right, guys, so tip five, don't breathe the fumes. Never, ever breathe heated plastic fumes because some of them release toxic chlorine gas when you heat them up. Um, so this should have been tip number one. It ended up being number five. I guess I breathe too many fumes because my brain's not working today, guys. But what I do is I wear one of these um, when I'm welding plastic like that. And of course, y'all aren't gonna go out and buy a full face respirator. So another thing you can do is get a fan and just have it blowing the fumes all out of your way, the smoke and stuff. Just get it out of the garage, get it out of your face. Even if you're outside, get it going so you don't breathe it in. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you how to identify what type of plastic you're working with so you can get the right filler rods. It can be very, very difficult, especially on automotive parts sometimes, to figure out what kind of plastic it is. All right, so I have this weed killer bottle here. You can see on the bottom of it says HDPE. It's got a triangle with a two in it. That's high density polyethylene, so you want high density polyethylene, filler rods. Uh, let's go see if we can find some other things with these little triangles on it. Here's some assembly lube. You can see on the bottom of it right here, HDPE. Let's go see what else we can find. All right, so here's a jar of Vaseline that I was using to grease up some O-rings. You can see right here, it says number five, PP. I think it's polypropylene. Uh, let's go see what else we can find. All right, so here's a water bottle right here. You can see it's got a triangle with a one in the center of it. it says Pete. Uh, not sure what that stands for, but I do know a guy named Pete, so maybe this will work on something. And then lastly, here's a milk jug, just a regular standard milk jug with some antifreeze in it. And these are always that I've found HDPE. You can see right there, HDPE with the triangle. So these work great for filler rods. They really do. If you just want to melt some of this stuff, and uh, stick it down in there and melt it back in there. These milk jugs work great because you can cut them into little slivers, but they're not black, so you gotta keep that in mind if it's in a place where you're gonna see it. All right, so here's another piece of plastic right here off the bottom of the four-wheeler. Um, and you can see I had been doing some work on it right here. Um, I need to do some more work on it, but basically I just melted the little hole back together like that with the same technique and the blowtorch. That way the bolt stays on there and the thing doesn't just fall off. Now this is a much, much more pliable material. Not exactly sure what it's made out of, but it's definitely different than this. It could be the same kind of plastic with some kind of rubberizer put in there. I have no clue, but it works good on this too. It feels almost like HDPE, like that milk carton material. But most of the time when you're working on stuff like this, you'll never ever find that little triangle. Um, good luck. There's other things, other identification things on here. I'm not exactly sure how to use them. Like there's these wheels like this with an O2 on here, O6, O4. Not sure if that helps identify the type of plastic. It's worth trying to figure out on some stuff, but some stuff you just have to guess because like this and on a car, you'll never find the little triangle if it's really messed up. If you get lucky, you will. If not, you just kind of have to guess sometimes. See if it works. So that's it for the video, guys. I'll check y'all on the next one. Weld up some plastic, save some money, be safe. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below for more videos in the future. Peace.